Hello and welcome back. I've completed all the red bridges. Ash is going to die. If you're curious how to do the red bridges, just go up and down about 60 billion times. It'll give you the Perseus bow and the Holy Rod, I think. There you go. Pretty good bow. Uh, so is the rod, actually. Of course, obvious downside of the rod. By the way, there is a rare Aaronite that can spawn here, I think. Is that even a rare? No, it's, there's a rare uh, Vazneer that can spawn here or something like that. If you kill enough Didar, Diadars, Theodars? Not entirely sure. Uh, I have received a message that someone is suffering. I'm also about to die. I have died. I actually didn't even need to swap party leads because the Arise is capable of going. Excuse me? I did not know those were capable of moving. I forgot what I was saying. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've forgotten. Anyway, we're going to make our way up to... We're going to apparently keep fighting these. You kill ten of these and it spawns a rare uh, Vaznir. Vaznir? Vaznir? I think something like this. Which we've probably killed way, way more than ten. So we've re met the requirements. It's just a matter of it showing up eventually. I've completely forgot what I was doing, what I was saying earlier. I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna grab this treasure. It gives the holy rod. Uh, the holy rod is pretty good. The downside, of course, is that it is the holy rod. Slow the game down. Take so the freaking treasure. You no, know, it's not the holy rod. It's holy. Never mind. I'm an idiot. Now we have holy. Holy is very good. Holy is very expensive, unfortunately. So. Um, it also in the original version, or the PS2 versions of the game, I should say. In the PS2 versions of this game, it, uh, wholly cost... Essentially, there's, there's a background thing, a background system for spells that essentially had a cost. The PS2 is only capable of showing so much. It was a hardware limitation, obviously. So they set up a system where you could only have a, a value of eight spells casting at a time. I'm just gonna fucking bypass this. Holy had a, val a base value itself of eight, so ho casting holy itself completely filled that queue, which meant you couldn't cast, and this applied to the enemy too. Nothing could be cast until holy's animation finished. Uh, lower level spells obviously cost less. You know, one, two, four, eight. I think were the tiers for uh, spell value, but that is no longer a thing in this version. So. Uh, you can cast four holies at the same time if you feel like it, uh, which I may. Well, actually, I can't. I'll show it at some point. We'll just cast a bunch of holies and other things at the same time to demonstrate it. But give me a brief moment while I do something. Alrighty. Let us continue having accomplished what I set out to do. Which will, you know, take all of like a quarter of a millisecond for you guys because I will just edit it anyway. So it doesn't matter that it even occurred. I could have said nothing, and most of you probably wouldn't have noticed. Why do I keep fighting these? I don't know. Why am I talking like this? I don't know. I've essentially lost my mind. I don't know when specifically it occurred, but I have indeed lost my mind. It's great times. I want to uh, get through this area. Well, it probably doesn't help that I spent like 95 trillion hours in this zone trying to build those bridges, but um, I want to get through this area so that I can actually uh, start doing some more of the slightly more interesting end gamey style stuff. At the moment, we're sort of just, you know, quadruple speeding our way through the story here which I have seen about 80 trillion times. The story holds very little value to me. I'm basically just recording the story because you guys probably want to see it. It is not your power which over the temporal world holds sway. Once again, a bit arrogant of themselves. I need to move my chair. There we go. Sort of. My chair keeps rolling. Please help. Assist, por favor. There's nothing down there, that's disappointing. 
Save crystal here to reset our MP and HP and statuses and stuff like that. Elevator is accessible. There is literally nothing that way. It's just a giant circle with no loot on it, so I don't recommend it going that way. I distinctly remember that because I remember saying, why is there no loot over here, Square? But anyway. It is the Undying who straightened the weave. Indeed, once again, very, very full of themselves. We should be coming up on a boss fight here shortly. Whenever Ash is done casting regen on herself. Here we go. And then she'll cast Lure on herself because it has just worn off. I wish my chair would stop rolling. I need like a, a stop. I need brakes on this chair. Stop just rolling away from where I put it. Anyway. This is our second boss. Second of three, ye without strength, return whence you came. This is another relatively simple encounter. Especially if you're utilizing haste and slow for that matter, but even without it, simple dim simple dimple. What? I am very hungry. Good heavens. Anyway, it immediately starts the fight with Enrage. It also starts the fight, excuse me, Fran, with some buffs that I would recommend dispelling if possible, which you should be able to dispel, not respell. It will, it will get regen back. That's not really what we wanted. We just wanted to remove the haste. I think it might cast haste on itself again at some point, but it doesn't have much health. This is essentially the whole boss fight. There you go. For some reason, yes, the water fish is weak to fire. I don't know why. Yes, that was a boss encounter. I don't know if it was intended to be difficult or what they expected when they made this boss, but there you go. Excuse me. Burp, good brother. Anyway. We did it. Woo. You really don't need to take this long. The congratulations screen is longer than the boss fight. Please help. For real though, like, there he goes. Took it a while. I was taking its sweet time. That's alright though. So there's, one, there's no loot in any of these boss rooms. They're just strange squares. Full of water. Don't really know why, but there you go. Alright. So now we can make our way up to the next ascent. Now around the circle is nothing. There's no reason to go through that circle. There is some treasure this way, which I almost forgot about. It's also very difficult to see because of the darkness. But anyway. Pardon the noises in the background, I probably will have to actually cease recording after this little video here because of numerous things, mostly the fact I'm starving, but also noise. So we get a change of music, not a change of scenery, because we're still in Pharos. It's time we're on the second ascent, though. I intended to actually cut these into first and second and third ascent, actually, so maybe I should actually cut the video before we get to here. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, there's no treasures or anything. We have I mean, numerous. We have, we have four. I don't know why I said numerous. We have four ways we can go around. Starting from this way and going uh, clockwise is what we're going to do. There is an altar of knowledge, an altar of steel, I think. Altar of Magic and then Altar of Wealth, I think is the order they go in. I'm not The order doesn't really matter, but there's four of them. Knowledge removes your on-screen map. Uh, steel removes your attack function from the menu, which means you can no longer do basic attacks. It don't do that one, I'd recommend. Um, magic obviously removes your magic, and Wealth removes your item capability from the menu. You can read the inscription and it sort of gives you some sort of, you know, 
thing. Now, generally speaking, I get rid of wealth because I like having the on-screen map. So whenever it does this thing, we will touch the altar. We will forsake our wealth and it will open the door behind us. Now, all four of these paths are identical. The only thing that changes is what you give up to access them. As well as technically what happens at the top of this area, but you can sort of bypass that by just breaking game mechanics and ignoring how this works. But anyway, so wealth avails you not. We can no longer use items. Until we take that back. But if we take that back, the door closes and we can't get through here, etc, etc. Not exactly a complex system they have here, but again, all four are duplicates of each other. Rare souls who cost tower and sky. I think you get a, you possibly get a different little uh, dialogue there from the statue if you go to the different ones, but it's also possible that is not true. Now we don't have a map here because this is the second ascent, and it does have different enemies because it is the second ascent. Primarily these guys, but also some harder enemies as well. Nothing too difficult, mind you, but, you know. Don't pull, like, everything in the zone, it'll probably kill you. Magnificent beyond power, beyond your knowing. Sorry, I don't know why I put power in there. So again, we think we're amazing. Look at how amazing they are. You are just mortals, haha, etc, etc. I don't know where the map is for this area, by the way. I don't think I normally pick it up now that I think about it, but I'm not sure. You can use uh, holy on these guys or curative magics because they are undead. If you so desire. I don't really want to spend MP on holy, plus Fran doesn't know holy because she's a red mage, so. We're gonna do this with the most inefficient party for fighting skeletons because we have an archer who does bugger all damage against skeletons. It's really the only one doing any damage is Redis and Ash, and they're not doing very high damage, you could probably tell. Please stop. Skeleton has beaten the dickens out of me. Something on my map is flashing. Alright, oh, the direction we must traverse. On the other side of the room. If I could see, there is indeed something on this side of the room. Please. There we go. An opal ring. It's actually not bad. I'll take it. There's no reason not to, obviously. It's free accessory. Why would you not? So that is the way we are intended to go, I think. Or is that the way back down? That's the way back down. Okay. Just kind of wandering at this point. Oh, there's the way we're supposed to go over there. The center holds not for us. It's just, you know... We can go around to the center if we want, I guess, but there's really no reason to. What we want is that little U-shaped, I guess N-shaped area there. That is a staircase that leads upwards. This is a, this is a room with a, nothing in it but a treasure chest, which contains fuck all gill. Hooray! Ah, this is the other type of enemy in the area. A boon, or a boone. If you prefer that pronunciation of it. It doesn't really do much, but uh, in groups they can be dangerous because of Pulsar Wave, and I think they have some AoE magic, like Tremor and stuff like that. Which for some reason the player never gets access to. Don't really know why those spells exist, but not to the player. Probably explained at some point, but I wasn't paying attention in class. I think there's also some Wraith type enemies that can spawn here. There's also these. Which are slightly more dangerous than boons, but not too bad, as long as they don't beat your healer to death. Because they are very capable of doing that. The blood darkened bones we're picking up are valuable. Uh, in fact, I'd recommend having someone steal if you're confident in your ability to live through the area. I think this is the way we have to go. This is probably why I never pick up uh, a map for it now. Jesus Christ. A map for this area. Alright, we don't have items. Fran, however, knows rays, so don't worry. 
Redis also knows Redis also knows Arise. Uh, so as long as either you have a healer or Redis is alive, you don't need the Phoenix Downs to resurrect. That's why I usually pick items. A blood and darkened bone. There's an enemy through this door. What is it? It's a Reaver, I think. Indeed. They will buff themselves. I think they might also buff nearby enemies, but... You know, they sort of just exist and beat the dickens out of someone. Keep them off your healer, otherwise your healer will die. This is not the direction we are intended to go. I'm just on a bit of a wander to see if there's anything in here. It's not. Casas, it's so dark. Just for me, it's probably fine on YouTube. I don't know. It doesn't help that my uh, window's open and it's right there, so it's difficult to see. But regardless, see, there's that AoE magic that we don't have. It looks cool. I wish... Maybe we do get that. I actually know we don't, because I have all the magic unlocked and it's not an option. I think. Anyway, regardless, it looks cool, but we, you know, how come I can't do it? How come the enemy can do it? I want to have fun. I don't know why there's two different paths to get out of this room, but there are. Everyone has slowed. I wish we didn't, because it would dramatically increase our ability. That's two Reapers. That's not good. That one has haste. Doesn't matter, it's almost dead. Please, sir, stop casting whatever it is you're casting. There's also a skeleton involved now. By the way, Redis does have a remarkably high block rate if you feel like casting a lure on him to have him tank for you. His HP is pretty low, though. This is not the way we're supposed to go. I'm just having a gander in here real quick. Try and steal stuff from these dudes. Crown of laurels, etc, etc. You might have noticed a pattern as to how to traverse this area. You are correct if you have noticed it the same way that everyone else watching probably has. Oh, that's not good. Ow. Ow. Oh, Fran is disabled. That's not good. Our party is going to die, in fact. Let's get Pinello up. Get uh, Vaughn up. Well, Pinello has in fact died. We're actually missing. This is not particularly good. Let's bring Vaughn back in. Sorry. All right, we don't have items. Hmm. This could pose a problem. Fran is still alive. As long as we can keep Fran alive. Preferably have some sort of healing capability, obviously, would be beneficial, but uh, we do. Oh, wait, wait, we know Kiraja. That's right. Can we get it off in time? No, we cannot. So instead, we're going to flee. We're going to flee all the way back through here, through this zone transition. Preferably at a slower speed than I was going so that we can get out of combat and reset, because that was a bit dangerous. Let's go ahead and get everyone back up as best. Well, that's too many people, because freaking Bosch is being targeted, as is tradition. Okay, get Pinello out, raise Ash. All right. Um, I think this was our party. Fran is still disabled. So, oh, there we go. She's no longer disabled. We've done it. We have lived through the encounter of difficult contentness. Unfortunately, some stuff respawned behind us, so we're going to have to fight it. I didn't know this guy respawned. I just noticed that guy respawned. Doesn't matter. Reaver's going to fight us. Fight me, not my healer. Please help. I'm dying. Fran does not have nearly the healing output that Pinello has, whoops. Which is obvious, that button is so sensitive. Why does he aggro from the other room? Why is that an AoE disable? Oh, Fran doesn't have uh, Suna either. Okay, nope. 
Anyway, the, what I was talking about before, the pattern on how to actually traverse this area was actually going back and forth through the uh, sides. You are correct if you figured that out. That is unfortunately not the case. Now we have to mix it up and go this way. There's the wraith that I knew existed. The necro fiend. What even... Was there some confusion? Because I think someone just got hit. Please stop. There we go. Alright, this door cannot be opened from this side. I forgot my apologies. We have to actually go this way. Excuse me? Oh, hello. I don't know where you were, Mr. Reaver friend, but hi. Welcome to the party. You have a Reaver times two. I wish you did not exist, but you do. Red Beast Lord hides. Beast Lord hides are also pretty valuable. And I'm running on quad speed just to save time on the encounters because they're just encounters. Actually, nothing exciting happens in these random, not even random fights, the fights with the normal trash mobs. That is a thing that is also capable of spawning here. That both here has decided to run over to steal from for the next nine centuries. Running at quad speed just just to, you know, save everyone the insanity that is watching me fight through this area for like 50 minutes. Alright. She's up. She's up already. Good to go. I think if she had a shield on, she'd probably be doing a little bit better on the tanking front. Our healer is gone. That's okay. That's not okay. We have uh, a predicament here. Try and just kill it. Stop healing and kill it. Thank you. Now we must wait for the disabled to wear off. I mean, we don't really need to. If we had protect as well, I'd, by the way, I'd rec excuse me, recommend utilizing protect. Fran has no MP. This is why leveling Fran is always a hassle. Bring Vanilla back in, whatever. Uh, if you have protect, I'd recommend using it simply because it makes you dramatically more difficult to kill. In fact, fighting the trash mobs between the bosses in this area is honestly much more difficult than just fighting the bosses. Unfortunately. I hate how you can't interact with stuff while that gauge is up. The uh, cast bar gauge, even though you're done casting, you have to sit there and watch the gauge finish. There we go. Someone leveled up. I don't know who because I wasn't paying attention. Onwards to the next area. Notice we are on 64 of 100. A fair chunk of them goes by really fast, so. This area contains a save crystal so that we can reset ourselves. Also contains a rather large circular area, as you can see. Also contains this, so you can look out at the sky. If you so desire, that skybox never changes, but you know. Why did I run this way? I don't know. I just wanted to show you guys the sweet skybox. Duh. Gosh. All that lived and ever shall by Giru Vegan's grace to prosper. Once again, I hate the Akurians just because of how full of themselves they are. I mean, they are immortal all-powerful beings that completely and utterly destroy us, but still. Like, you know, calm down a little bit there. Oh man, Norwegian. Now you still, you do maintain your uh, handicap for this boss encounter, which is why I recommended not removing either magic or physical attacks, because uh, those two are very useful. Generally speaking, I would recommend removing it knowledge because you don't really need the map. However, I like having the map, so I usually just get rid of items. Anyway, here's our boss. As is tradition at the start of any boss fight, you might notice he has buffs. I would recommend removing those buffs. Makes the boss easier. He does, however, have an AoE silence. Penelo is going to die. Oh no, she lives somehow. 
She's silent, so she can't heal herself. I should probably remove that, but... Vanilla will remove it eventually. There she be. Once this guy hits 50 health, if you fear the damage he can put out, because he can put out quite a lot, because he's capable of countering, as you can see. Uh, you can use quickenings to burn his health down. Basically, just be careful with your uh, healer getting silenced. He also does buff himself with bravery. Uh, do you have dispel? You don't. We have a dispel moat we could use, but... That's alright. Bravery buffs his physical attack power. I, again, would greatly recommend removing it so that he doesn't destroy whoever is actively tanking. He's going to destroy whoever is actively tanking anyway because Pinello is casting haste back there. I mean, whatever. He's dead anyway, it doesn't matter. But jeez, Pinello. Do your gerb. It's probably just how I have her gambit set up, or a little wonky or something, I don't know. Pinello's over here doing flips again. I guess she's just a fan of flips. I don't know. My CPU usage is a real freaking high. I feel like I may have uh, set something in the recording a little bit too high there. I don't know. I don't even know what I have it set to at this point, to be honest. But anyway, make our way out of here. We will enter the third ascent. Wherein I will also stop this video. Probably a bit short of a video, I guess, but that's all right. Actually, before we do anything, uh, there's the way you're supposed to do this and the way that you can do it. What you can do is regardless of what you picked, go over here, give up knowledge and then just take knowledge back. Otherwise, you just have to take back what you gave away. So in our case, we gave away our wealth so we can walk back over here, touch the altar. It'll drag this little stone back over to it and give us our items back. Like so. Now what that does is that blocks off that door. Brings an elevator to us that we can use to traverse. So we can't go back that way, which means I can't actually stop the video because I can't save here. Forgot about that little tidbit, but that's okay. Do we get a save point soon? I actually don't know. Wish I had saved back there, but regardless, we have access to the elevator and I can't save to end the video, so let's make our way over. Oh, I forgot you were here. Why are you- what? Why do you occasionally spawn here? Many questions. It does no silence go, which is rather annoying, but... Intites are always the same level, which means... Actually, are they the same level? No, they're not. They're varying levels. It's the elementals that are the same level. This one, I think, for some reason, is like level 45, or... They're not 45, 35 for some god-awful reason. I don't know why. We have, however, immobilized it, which is irrelevant because it's a caster, so... There you go, we killed it. 3000 XP, we've done it. This will just tell us that the elevator is an elevator. There are ways untrodden past but one. So we can go to the 67th floor. Why the elevator doesn't go to 100, I don't have the faintest idea. If there's not a safe point here, I'm gonna see if we can drop down to floor one with the elevator. I don't remember if we can. Actually, don't think there's an L. There's a save point here. Wait, is this the boss fight? Is it? Has to be, because the boss is on an elevator scene. Well, apparently, it's not, and there is indeed a save crystal here. So that will take us to the third and final ascent for Pharos. Uh, which will be for a different video, because as I've mentioned, I'm ending this one. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time.